So welcome to this uh, Chrome Enterprise tutorial with Apps Events and Acer. And today what I'm going to do is just show you uh, an app script that's written uh, to give you a bit more support around one-to-one -one deployment of Chromebooks. So the, here's a use case. You have a, wide, a, a large number of Chromebooks that are being deployed and you're giving those out to particular users to distribute on your behalf. Um, a good scenario for this might be if you think of uh, a group of schools, you've got teachers in those schools who are going to be issuing those Chromebooks to their pupils, or you could be in an enterprise situation and you could have managers in particular settings who will be issuing out Chromebooks to their staff or giving that role to someone in the organization to go and deploy and issue those Chromebooks. And what we can do if we're going to a one-to-one -one deployment, it's important to, to associate a specific user with the Chromebook device that you've issued. So you can track who has which Chromebook. And a great way to do that is to update the annotated user field that's in the admin console to show this user has this Chromebook. And you can update the annotated user using APIs and using a web app. So what I've got created here is a web app that does just that. And it provides a little bit of verification uh, around this, the user account and around the uh, serial number of the Chromebook that's being allocated before user clicks the magic button and makes the two link together. So um, let me talk, uh, talk a little bit about that particular web app. So um, the web app is uh, available here. I'll just show you it. So this is my web app. There's a bit of text at the beginning that gives a bit of notification around uh, what users should be looking for. Um, and the web app is written in such a way that it should be easily migratable to any domain. And I'll show you that in just a second or two. So how does it work? Well, I'm just going to put in my serial number for my device. And as soon as I type in a certain number of characters, um, I get a list from the admin directory a list of all the serial numbers that match. So I've typed in some characters and up it comes, and this is the actual serial number that I'm looking for. So that's grand, that's the one I want. And then what I want to do is I want to look for a particular user. Um, so Ben is a user, and I want to look for Ben. So now Ben is going to be allocated as the annotated user for that Chromebook. So now that I have a green tick here for both, I could update that Chromebook, but if it wasn't Ben, if it was another user, notice what's happening here is I get a fail message because that user doesn't exist in the directory. But it's Ben that I want, so that's grand. Similarly, if I change the serial number, that one's not a match, so, I, so it's not resolving for me. Okay, so those two are matches, and because of that, I can click update, and what will happen is I get a confirmation that this user has been assigned, this Chromebook has been assigned to that particular user. And that's all it is. That's all the script is. But behind the scenes, there's quite a lot that's going on. So let's go and have a little look at the actual script itself. So this is the script that I've written. And with this script, all you need to do to take this code and move it to your own domain is change this domain variable at the top. So right now it's demoworkspaceedu.com and um, that's because it's the domain that I'm running it in. But if you want to take that and change it to your own domain, you just put your own domain inside the two apostrophes there. So you just write your own domain in there. So what does it do, this script? Well, the script is a web app and it's deployed as a web app and I've actually built it using app script, but I've also included the um, jQuery and um, Bootstrap to give me the CSS framework that provides my interface on the web pages that you're seeing. There are four files in the script. Um, Code.js is the main app script, which um, contains the uh, procedure to run the initial page, uh, one that gets all the users from uh, based on the search string that I type in and finds the users in the admin directory and returns that information one that returns the serial number. So it goes and looks for the serial number for um, the, that matches the devices, that the, the serial number that I've typed in um, and returns that. 
and then another procedure which actually updates the annotated user against that Chromebook as the person that has the device. So those are the procedures that I've got running here and you can review that code yourself. There'll be a link in the video here uh, just down below a link to this code where you can get it. And then I have an index. This is my main HTML page that serves up the, the, web, the web app itself. And in here I've included Bootstrap and jQuery um, that provides my interface for this app. And then I've built it with jQuery to be responsive. And the, the fields that we fill up in the form are here. Um, and the information that we're gathering is all coded in the HTML here. I've got some JavaScript, which allows me to check to the runs the checks for the individual fields. So you don't have to reload the page to search for the serial number or search for the user. That all happens uh, using uh, uh, JavaScript and is refreshed on the page as you're, use, as you're using it. And then I've got some callbacks here, um, which carry out those various checks. There are some JavaScript functions to get the user and return it um, on the user success. If that's worked, what it does, it updates and puts the green tick in, for example, and so on. So I'll let you review that code as well. If the user isn't signed in to the domain, then um, the user will be prompted to log in. If the user isn't authorized to run this web app, then the user will be told that they can't access it. Um, how do I authorize users? Well, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying that the user has to be, um, has to have a department of staff. So this code here, what it does is it says, um, you've logged in the user, they've given us, the, we've got their email address. We're saying, is their department staff. If the department is staff, so I've read it, read the department, stored it in this variable staff. I'm saying if it's equal to staff, then we're going to give them the HTML page. That's the main page, the index. And if they're not staff, we're going to say they have no access. And if they're not logged in, we'll direct them to log in. And that's how I authorize people. So if somebody's in a staff department, then if the department is staff, then you can authorize them to access. And you could use any attribute that's in the admin console, any of the attributes of the user to give your criteria to access the application. Now with a web app, you need to deploy it. So to deploy a web, web app, you just click up here into deploy. I'll just note it before we go on to that, that the only API privileges that it has is for the admin directory. And I've given it, I've authorized it to access the admin directory. So when we deploy an app, you've got options around deployments. In this case, um, I'm managing an existing deployment of this app. So I can deploy it. And when you deploy an app, you click in here, you can edit your existing deployment. Uh, you can upload a, a up, put a change in for that deployment and you can deploy the app. Um, I've already got a deployment of this app. And in the details here, I actually have the web app location. So this changes every time you deploy the app, you get a new address for the app. So I suggest if you've got a website separately that you can do a .ht access redirect uh, to your web app. And that will mean that you can use a different URL for the app and it will always deploy there. But that's something to, to look into. This, but this is my URL for the app. So when I click on that and paste that in, that deploys the app for me. So that's very quickly. This app's a great way to um, empower users to manage some of your one-to-one -one Chromebook deployment. The code for the app is down below in the YouTube link. This has been a Chrome, uh, Chrome Enterprise tutorial with Apps Events and Acer. I'm Charlie Love, and thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.